Hey there guys, earlier today I live streamed the Shogun of Unknown Origin. During the live stream we figured out how to get a rank 1 clear without using the new Ibarra. So in this video I took some time to optimize the clear. You know, now we have the full data on the boss so I was able to work out the turns, get a turn chart, etc. And now we're going to run the same team that I did on my live stream and show you a rank 1. So we're going to turn on all the modifiers. Now, as far as if you don't have the exact same units I'm using, different EX levels, etc., um, I will talk about that some in the gear section at the end. Uh, keep in mind, this is the original Ibarra, the old one. This is not the new Ibarra. But this is the team we're going to use. I've run it twice additional to make sure there's no kinks. It works out fine. Um, you know, I've optimized it quite a bit from the live stream. So let's get in here and give it a go. Gear will be at the end of the video. Turn chart will be in the comments. And we'll, like I said, we'll discuss um, alternative units at the end of the video. Okay, so during the ambush, the boss will put up this uh, gravity attack as well as a um, healing reduction. So what we're going to do, Abigail on turn one. By the way, Lilith is provoking, but I don't think it matters who provokes. But just for, <clears throat> just the, you know, for the way we do, we're doing it, Lilith is provoking. I don't think it matters, though. So we're going to turn one. We're going to cover it with Abigail. We're going to contingency plan for the barrier and morale. And we're going to Shelga plus three. Melissa is going to shared immunity, chronic flow, and parasol shield. Um, on this turn, really, Fina and Ibarra don't have anything to do, so we'll just, like, whatever. Hold on a minute. Let's go ahead and, with Lilith, we're going to Unstoppable to imbue the party and double Rapture. That's going to be a really big healing, even though we do have a healing reduction. It's still going to be a bunch of healing because it's a lot. Olive is going to do both breaks, both killers, and her giant as the last action, just because it fills the morale gauge. Um, there's really nothing for these units to do, so we'll just like triple bolting with you, and Ibarra will just like, I don't know, literally, who cares? We'll just Sinister Storm three times to hit the boss a few times. It doesn't matter, because turn one, they're just basically a free action. Okay, so on turn one, the boss is going to do some AoE magic damage. Uh, it's relatively painful, but with a really powerful Abigail, as you can see, even though we weren't heal fully healed, it was totally fine. Um, if you're not using Abigail, it might be a little bit trickier. We'll get into that later. Um, so on turn two, Abigail is going to cast Cover again. The reason for that, you get extra morale for doing the mitigations, and this applies all three mitigations, physical, general, and magic. So we're going to cast Drone Cover, and then both Anti-Physical, Anti-Magical to break the boss by 87%. We're going to reload Olive to go ahead and do all the morale stuff again. Ibarra is now going to start focusing with Magic Boost. We're going to use the Ashura Field with Dark Fina. Melissa on this turn is going to get her Abyssal Blessing, because on turn 4 we're going to burst. So we're going to use a charge of her, um, her 100 Amplify. Then we're going to do a human killer on Lilith, and then just a different killer on anybody, because the killers fill the morale gauge. Then Lilith is going to do triple. We're going to double Rapture and use Betrayal. That's going to, again, heal the party. And at the moment, the boss has 99% mitigation, so there's no point in really trying the damage yet. Execution Order is a very powerful fixed magic attack, <clears throat> so it can be covered and provoked. It deals... Um, a million base damage lowered by your mitigations. So with Abigail using big mitigations, racial mitigation from Melissa, the execution shouldn't really be very painful, but again, it depends on your unit and the party you're using. So on turn three, we're going to use Abigail's SLB for mitigation and for the weapon in perils. That's a big one. We're going to use the SLB of Dark Fina. That's going to be mostly for the LB damage buff, because we already have um, an Amplify from Melissa. Now, the boss still has 99% mitigation, so there's no point in dealing damage. So we're going to, again, just continue to set up. So we're going to go ahead and use Magic Boost on Ibarra and a bunch of Morale Fill on Olive. Make sure the last action of Olive is her Giant Melon for focus for next turn. Uh, Lilith can just go ahead and hit the boss. Our healing reduction is now gone, as you can see. Now, this turn, the boss is going to do a very powerful AoE physical attack. So what we're going to do is we're going to imbue the boss to make him absorb. I'm sorry, to ab absorb it. So we're going to use all-consuming darkness. 
This is also going to apply the healing reduction down on the boss, and we're going to need that for the threshold soon, because uh, the boss heals on the threshold, and this healing reduction will make the boss heal for a whole lot less. So we're going to all consuming darkness. We're going to go ahead and do um, human killer on Lilith again, and then again just any killer for the morale game. <coughs> so this turn, all the physical damage is going to be absorbed. The boss also does physical damage that targets your. Um, uh, that targets your highest stat, your highest attack power unit. Um, we're absorbing it anyway, so we don't really care, but if you weren't absorbing it, make sure your highest attack power unit is someone like your tank or someone with high resistances. But if you're absorbing the attack this turn, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so on turn four, we're going to do our burst. Now, we want to burst as close as we can to 50 without going over. We, I, I know in my stream I was saying, oh, I wish I could push the threshold on turn four. Turns out it was a good thing that I couldn't push the threshold on turn four. We want to push the threshold on turn five, but the boss is going to have mitigation on turn five, not 99, but this turn the boss has no mitigation. So we want to burst as close as we can without going over. So we're going to SLB Lilith, SLB Olive. We're going to shift Ibarra and LB her. Now, for the chain count score, we're also going to use <coughs> double bolting strike with Abigail, and then we're going to use cover. Melissa is going to do human killer. This time, we're going to do it on Ibarra, and then we're going to do double chaos wave awakened. Now, we're also going to use the AOE 250 demon killer with um, Dark Fina, and then double chaos wave awakened. So, what we're going to do, we're going to start off by clicking and chaining Melissa and Dark Fina. That's going to put up all the killer buffs as the first action. Then they're gonna start building the chain with Chaos Wave Awakened. As soon as we see the Chaos Wave Awakened reach something like nine hits, we're gonna chain Lilith and Olive. We're gonna wait a split second, then we're going to click Ibarra and then Abigail. That should be a 100 count chain score as well as going close to 50 without going over. So let's give it a go. So we're going to start these. Wait just a second. Wait for the chain. Go ahead and chain these. Click this and click this. And this should be a decent chunk of damage. Close to 50 without going over. That's great. Wonderful. And 2.7. We did our damage cap. Damage cap is now done. No longer have to worry about that. The chain count is done. If you saw my stream, you saw I got stuck on that chain count score for like half an hour because I couldn't figure out a good turn to do it. That's a good turn to do it. We're good. Now, as far as the attacks the boss did that turn, it was just some magic damage. Abigail doesn't care. Now the boss has 50% mitigation. Only 50. So the 99 mitigation is gone. Now it's only 50. But now we need to push the rest of the threshold. So as long as you're like at 58 or lower, you should be able to push the rest of the threshold because the boss only has 50 mitigation. So what we're going to do is on turn five, <coughs> we're going to do triple betrayal with Lilith, which is now a tag chain because she did her SLB. Olive is going to double break a killer for the mod buff, um, giant melon, and then summer shot. Ibarra is going to LB again. If your Ibarra's LB is not fully ready, you could use something like... Um, Bar, jar, bar Phoragia to fill it up. This fills 10 LB per cast, but we didn't need to, so whatever. So we're just going to use cover, and we'll just do anti, physical, and whatever. Um, actually, now that I think about it, now that I think about it, let's actually wait on Abigail. We don't need to use her yet. We're going to use her to fill more LB gauge in a minute. Um, it's turn five. What are we going to do? We're going to use... Let's use Melissa. Yeah, I... I I have a turn chart, which, you know, you should reference as well. Uh, we're going to kill her on you. We're going to refresh. We're going to kill her on Lilith. We're going to shared immunity. And now we're going to do the second charge of the Magnus Amplify. Because we're going to keep bursting a lot after the threshold. Um, okay, so that was done. And now let me think for one second. Just making sure, making sure I've got all this correct before I, before I send everything off. Um... Yeah, so we're just going to use Imbue and Double Bolting with you. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so we're good. So we're going to go ahead and click Olive. Wait just a second. Then click these. 
and this should push the threshold very comfortably. You know, we were really close. And, you know, the, the main thing is Ibarra's LB pushing the threshold. We were really close anyway, so that was good. So threshold has now been pushed on turn five. Now, the boss is going to heal basically to full health, but with Melissa's healing reduction, he's only going to heal to 75%. It makes phase two a whole lot easier. Um, so Abigail... The boss is also going to cure all his debuffs, so there's not much for her to do. We'll just go ahead and drone cover, and let's just double bar for Rage to fill the, fill the LB gauge of units. Okay, here's the threshold. The boss doesn't actually attack on the threshold, so basically a free turn. And here's the healing, only to 75 because we had Melissa's debuff. Um, but the boss cured all his breaks. Now, of course, um, you know, wait one second, and then Abigail will automatically re-break, which is convenient. Um, so here we go. So Abigail automatically reapplied breaks. Only 80%. That's good enough for the moment. Um, we also, the boss now has permanent attack and magic buff. So he's going to deal a lot more damage. But more importantly, he now has permanent, unremovable human mitigation. This is why humans are really penalized on this fight. Um, Ibarra, both Ibarra old and new, are demons. Lilith is a demon. They ignore the mitigation. Unfortunately, Olive is now going to suffer some pretty heavy uh, damage penalties. Also, the boss does still have one more turn of 50% general mitigation. Let's go ahead and use the SLB of Abigail to reapply those weapon imperils. Let's use the SLB of Dark Fina. That's going to put up <coughs> uh, mitigation, not mitigation, buffs and all that kind of stuff. Let's use the SLB of Melissa, and we're going to target Dark Fina. Because we need Dark Fina's cooldown her demon cooldown to be ready sooner, so that's going to make it ready again for the next burst turn. Uh, now this turn, we're going to go ahead and deal a little bit of damage, not a ton, but a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and unstable corruption, and then double betrayal, or betrayal and rapture. We don't really need healing, so just, just be double betrayal. Um, Ibarra is going to triple bolting strike in the shift form, which is void entity. And then Olive can get ready for SLB next turn. So we're going to go ahead and do double break, giant, we're going to do a cap, and then we're going to cannon fire cannon to get ready. Now you, you might be wondering why am I not using the morale buffs like the attack and magic buff. Premium Dark Fina's um, SLB is a 400% all buff, so we really just don't need any buffs from the morale gauge with this. And here we go. A little bit of damage. You're not going to deal much damage this turn. We don't have good breaks up. The boss cured all his debuffs. This is mostly a setup turn. He still has mitigation as well. Now, turn six, the boss is going to do execution again, and then some cleaves, etc. No big deal. All of that is fine. Okay, now it is time for the next big burst. The boss has no mitigation this turn. We're going to burst hard. We also now have our 100% dark amp. So again, another big burst with all of this, but wait just a second. We are going to look at my turn chart to make sure I'm doing everything right. <coughs> yeah, turn... Seven is going to be another AoE physical that deals a ton of damage. So what we're going to do is we're going to absorb the boss again. So Melissa is going to... Um, what is Melissa going to do? We're going to do Human Killer on Lilith. i got to look at my turn chart real quick. We're going to Seconds of Support on Lilith for the modifier buff. And we're going to do Uncontrollable Darkness for another Dark Imbue on the party. Uh, Fina is going to go ahead and Demon Slayer. And then we can just... Um, really, nothing else matters, completely honest here. Uh, yeah, we can just, like, double Bolt and Strike. Yeah, let me actually change my turn chart real quick. And that'll just help build the chain quicker. And then before we do that, though, remember the boss cure the breaks. We want to put the good breaks back up. So we're going to go ahead and cover. And then we're going to... Actually, let's not cover. Let's, you know what's better going to do? Is anti-magic, anti-physical, and contingency plan. I like that better, actually. Let me actually change my turn chart real quick. That's actually a much better option here. Um, yeah. Times two. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for this, you know, in the, the middle of the thing adjusting. But anyway. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to click Fina and then just click the click the rest of the guys. So Fina, chain these, and then click Ibarra immediately. And that's going to deal a nice chunk of damage here. 
There it is, good chunk of damage. Now this is the turn that we're going to absorb. We almost damage capped the second time, but again, uh, that turn Olive had a, a big damage penalty because she's a human. Anyway, you know, it was it was a nice chunk of damage. So what we're gonna do this turn is one, two, three, four, five. We're actually going to I don't need to cast cover again, do I? No, I don't, huh? No, so we're gonna just bar for Raja times three on this turn. Yep, so we're gonna use um you know what, actually, honestly speaking, eh, turn eight. No, I think what we're gonna do instead, Melissa is going to do curse control for the amplify and imbue. We're gonna do parasol for the mitigation, and we're gonna do human killer on Ibarra. Let's see. We're going to We're going to triple Barfaraja and get Lilith's LB again. I like this a lot. We're going to LB you and we're going to extreme Nova you and you are going to cap. So we're going to do this, 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 this and cap and you are going to cap as well. So, yes. So we're going to do this, yes, wait, wait, chain this up and deal a little bit of damage here. Oh, that's wonderful, that is wonderful. Okay, so this turn is again a, a nothing turn. All he does is put a gravity attack and reapply the healing down, no big deal. Now turn nine is gonna be relatively painful. Um, it's a bunch of damage on your tank, but our tank currently has a 100,000 point hit point barrier. So we just don't really care. So we're gonna go ahead and use the SLB here. We're gonna use the SLB here. Now, we're going to use Melissa to do... We're going to use Hastened Recovery to cure the Healing Down debuff. This is not really required, but it doesn't hurt. Then we're going to do Curega, and we're going to do Human Killer on Lilith. Lilith is going to... Um, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, Lilith will go ahead and triple Kiss of Betrayal. This turn is just a magic turn. Um, we're going to get Olive ready. We're going to do this, 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 uh, that, and Magnus, and Ibarra, um, honestly, can just guard. Nope, not you. Yeah, Ibarra doesn't have anything she can realistically contribute on this turn. So, we're gonna do this, this, and you can just guard. Ibarra, Ibarra has served her purpose. We are basically done with the fight at this point. Okay, so here's a magic attack. Um, it's a bunch of, bunch of damage that Abigail will cover, but she's got the, um... 100,000 point barrier, so, you know, whatever. <laughs> Just don't even care. And now we kill the boss, so it is time to finish the boss. Now, at this point, the boss now has 25% damage mitigation, but, you know, we're good to go. So we're going to LB you, we're going to SLB you, SLB you. Um, just for turn count, or chain count, we can do Extreme Nova on you. Now, just in case you weren't almost winning, we're going to use the SLB of Melissa, because we want to do Demon Killer, but it's not ready. But if we SLB and target Fina, Demon Killer is now ready. So we can Demon Killer you, and Abigail can just triple bolting. For the, for the turn, for the chain count. This is in case your chain count wasn't done earlier in the fight. Um, now it definitely is. So, there it is. And there is the rank one clear. Um, you know, we did uh, 2.7 on turn four. We did, the, we did the turn, we did the chain count right there as well as on turn five um, or turn four, one of them. I don't know, whatever. We did, the, we, did the, we did the chain count. So that was a pretty straightforward, perfect score on the boss. There it is. All done. And here's the damage breakdown. So Lilith is a really big deal because, um, you know, she deals high dark damage. She's got a pretty much permanently active 60% personal only dark amp, um, plus 100% from Melissa on some turns. She does decent damage. You know, after, after her SLB gets going, you can use tag chaining every single turn, which is great. And she's a demon, meaning she ignores the mitigation in phase two. Now, the old Ibarra um, is a little bit wonky here because she does have a trance shift, and that's really obnoxious, which makes her, like, waste half the fight in her base form doing nothing. But she does deal respectable damage for bursting, 
with her, you know, L being the shift form, and then she is a demon, so she does help do a big chunk in phase two. But unfortunately, like I said, half the fight she is stuck in the base form doing nothing. And then <coughs> Beach Blaster Olive is a breaker, as well as, you know, tag, not tag chainer, a extreme Nova chainer, etc. So there we go. I will show you the gear and explain the. And look at this, look at this. I am done farming the boss. All my tickets on day one. We can forget the boss the rest of the week. No, I'm kidding. We're, we're actually going to do a bunch more, a bunch more clears. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to show you the gear. You know, just as a re reminder, the modifiers are not currently turned on. This is the gear with no modifiers. So if you're comparing your gear to mine, don't turn the mod ons when comparing. Anyway, so real quick about um, alternative units. So Abigail. Um, the boss does a bunch of damage, and Abigail's really good at mitigating it. Also, Abigail um, does the weapon in peril for our team. You know, no one else is doing a rod in peril, and um, Ibarra is using a rod. Abigail's, ro Abigail's weapon in peril is a lot better than Lilith's, you know, 30 versus 20. So that is kind of a sort of big deal. If you don't have Abigail, you could use a different tank. You know, Paladin Cecil is probably fine. Um... I'm sort of doubting that Chow is going to be good enough here, but he might be. I don't know. Um, but anyway, if you have Abigail, she's obviously MVP. Melissa, another really big deal. Melissa allows us to cut that healing on the threshold in half. She's a 100 dark amp. She's a 250 human killer. She's good for the cooldown reduction. She support chains. She does racial mitigations. She's a really big deal. I absolutely will try to do clears not using Melissa or Abigail. You know, the, the, this fight is open for three weeks. You got to give me time to try to figure that out. Um, Lilith <coughs> was a big deal for damage. Um, if you don't have her, um, other, you know, I, I'm going to try fire and ice teams as well. So, you know, just give me time to try other alternatives. Now, as far as Olive and Ibarra, these two are very swappable. Olive, you know, she was a 90 breaker, but you don't really need that. And, um, you know, the 87 breaks from Abigail are totally fine. Um, so, swapping Olive is whatever. You can swap her for your favorite DPS. Um, Cleome, uh, what's the new Ibarra, um... What's, what's, you, can, you, you can even try out some of the near units because the near units are um, physical. I'm sorry, are machines, meaning they don't they don't they don't suffer the human mitigation in phase two, but they do have the attack power down modifier, which is a bad thing. And then old Ibarra, um, the best swap for her would be the new Ibarra. <laughs> um, so if you pull the new Ibarra, definitely kick the old one to the curb. So here's the party that we used. So Abigail, um, in my clear with buffs. She did have the highest attack power. I went ahead and door potted all her stats so that she has the highest attack power after buffs. Because so we're using an attack power card, well, a general bolt card, but it has attack power on it. And we're also using stuff like Blizzard Orb, Paladin's Armor, um, you know, Guardian of Kyrie, etc. Just ways to get her attack power higher. That's if you're not using Melissa. Because if you're not using Melissa, then the boss's physical attacks will ignore cover, ignore provoke, and hit your highest attack power unit. We want that to be on Abigail, because they're elemental and she is wearing immunity. Um, if you're using Melissa, though, and you're just absorbing the boss's attacks on turn three and seven, uh, who cares? Who cares who has the high attack? You're, you're going to absorb it anyway. So there you go. So Melissa just wants high fire, ice, and dark resist, as well as um, a lot of spirit and HP. Uh, Blizzard Orb is very helpful for giving her some counters, if you have that. I mean, you should. <laughs> so there you go. Um, Melissa's gear is kind of whatever. It literally does not matter. It's completely irrelevant. All that matters is morale. So the, as much morale as you can. If you have it, uh, Wilkes card while dual wielding is really high morale. If you have um, Melissa's own card plus like the peppermint, the peppermint rod, that's a good option. Just, you know, whatever you can to fill morale. Because her gear, it doesn't matter. We gave her a little bit of Esper fill for the field. Premium Dark Fina, or Warrior's Prayer Dark Fina. Um, she can be swapped out, by the way. Um, I actually didn't mention her. She is our source of 250 Demon Killer. She has the Dark Field, which gives us a bigger Amplify. She gives us a 300% LB buff. Um, easy access to permanent stat buffs. Stuff like that. Um, other than that, you know, her gear doesn't, doesn't really matter. So a Morale card, Peppermint Rod if you own it. Um, I gave her this, the ruler's will because no one else was using this, and you really want someone to be using this because of the auto cast morale. So if no one's using all your clash gear, 
you know, start giving it to your support units. The rest of the team couldn't fit it. Um, <coughs> other than that, um, Extreme Nova frames help if you have it. Uh, some Esperfil, and yeah, make sure she's on Ashura. Uh, Lilith was the primary damage dealer here. Uh, I gave her a True Midnight Star, which is her own STMR. Um, the Paladin's Diadem of Will. Uh, real quick, a mention. There's a bug with the Paladin's Diadem of Will. If you're unable to craft it or craft it back to a, another version, you have to message support and tell them you have the Paladin's Diadem of Will bug and support will fix it for you. Mine was bugged. I, I, I had to send in a support ticket and they fixed it for me within, within half an hour. So it was very, very quick service. I appreciate that they, they fixed it right away and it was no problem, they fixed it. But yeah, there's a bug. Some players, their recipe got glitched on the, on the patch day whenever it came out and I was one of them. So if you can't craft the upgraded Paladin's Diadem Wheel, you gotta send in a support ticket, unfortunately. But once they fix it, it's fixed forever for your account. Um, anyway, other than that, LB damage versus humans and demons. She scales on defense, so 10,500 defense. Um, I gave her passive provoke. It doesn't, I, I'm 99% sure that does not matter. So we can just take that off and get rid of that. Um, and then a defense card. And that was, <coughs> that was her build. And she's maxed on everything. Um, Olive was just a DPS. Um, I gave her the Emperor's Armor for Human Killer and LB damage because uh, she couldn't fit the Clash of Wills gear because she's hard to gear here. But the Emperor's Armor is very helpful to gear for her. Uh, memory Chip of Sto Stories for the Chain Cap. Other than that, you know, Killers. A lot of Killers versus Human and Demon. That card gives Demon Killer and maxed LB, maxed Human, maxed Demon. And then Old Ibarra. This is the original Ibarra. Um... Empress's Celestite Rod and Treasured Ring to start with. I gave her a lot of Clash gear in the base form for the morale gain. Um, other than that, Magic Boost and Extreme Nova Frames. Shift Form is a <coughs> double hand LB damage versus humans and demons. And she is extremely hard to build for this. Um, she doesn't even have maxed out magic because I, she's hard to build. Uh, the Lucent Warfan is great here. It gives 100 LB damage and 75 Demon Killer. Uh, some Clash gear. She doesn't have any chain cap at all while double handing in the shift form. So you need to give her two sources. So we have one chain cap from Magisters, one chain cap from the Dazzle card, and then some double hands, some killers. And I think she was maxed on killers. Yeah, she is maxed on both magical demon and human and maxed LB. So she's maxed on everything except magic and her stats are still terrible. Mine's only EX2 though. At EX3 she'd be a lot better. But it was fine. It worked out. Anyway, there's my clear. Um... I definitely plan to do some alternatives. You know, I, I, I already got the comments. What if I don't have Dark Fina? What if I don't have EX3 Lilith? What if I don't have Melissa? What if I don't have Abigail? Stuff like that. Um, you know, over the course of the three weeks the boss is running, I will be trying alternatives. Turn charts in the comments. I'll be doing more clears soon. See you then.